on Saturday, November the 19th, a dream came true for Albi Matthews, Vice President of the South African Powerboat Association and his organising committee, when, for the first time in almost 20 years, an international field of nearly 30 offshore powerboats from the United Kingdom lined up against their South African counterparts in Table Bay. Well, this event started a long time ago when L.B. Matthews, working for the South Africans, representing them on the UIM, the World Body of Powerboat Racing, basically came together with the idea of the international race coming here to South Africa. We know the competition's good from England because we've seen Norman Leveson driving his four-litre boat in the World Championships, so at one point against all the international competitions from Scandinavia, Italy, Argentina, etc., he was running third in one of the long races in the World Championships. So ten boats have now come down to South Africa to compete, we hope, against some of the best that South Africans can provide, and I've got a feeling we're going to see some very good competition down here. The first time over here, um, very impressed. Love, love the country, love the weather. Jeff Perv, a highly experienced driver, 139 races to his credit. Alistair McNulty, 1987 British two-litre champion. I'd like to see, so uh, basically to be here. No stranger to the visitors is South African Norman Lemonson in Lemons in the World Championships in September. Getting back, it's getting powerboats racing back onto an international circuit, which I believe is important for us. Uh, the course we are racing today uh, is a total of 111 nautical miles, um, which involves uh, six different laps uh, around Table Bay. Boats and a rolling start at the Greenpoint Lighthouse. The green flag is raised and the three classes, two litre, four litre and six litre, have the crowd on their feet as they cross the start line. Taking in an early lead, Julian Craig and Peter Harrison in their six litre Telstar Monohull. Go Guernsey and Andrew Chamberlain in second position. C5 Thunderclap and RTO Rasputi in third position. Jeff Perv and Hospitality Inn in fourth position. The entire fleet accelerate at breathtaking speed as they head towards the heart of Table Bay and the first turn boy. It's early days, but Alistair McNaughty turns on the power and robs the South African offer Rizzitti of second position overall. And in fourth position, United Kingdom's Dave Trotter, the European champion. But just who is ahead of the British champion? It's number 11, the boat of Julian Craig and Peter Harrison, still leading overall in this championship. 227, Chris Theory leads the four-litre challenge from South Africa as they head for the second mark, which is a gate. In the confusion, the leading boats have missed the gate, resorting in high-speed navigational corrections to regain their position. And back to the Greenpoint Lighthouse, and it's the end of lap one. Julian Craig and Peter Harrison are number one for South Africa, hotly pursued by Dave Trotter from the United Kingdom. They've been full advantage of the navigational error at the gate by Alistair McNaughty, who is now in third position. And it's a grandstand view for the crowd as the United Kingdom takes on South Africa for the lead. Already, the field is beginning to spread out. The difference in engine power between the classes begins to tell. At 77, Ken Greenaway and Grant Harrison power through. It's disaster for South African top favourite Norman Lemonson and Stan Roberts. The tie bar linking the engines has snapped, and so their hopes for victory have gone with it in this race. Dejection for the man whose hopes were so high. Familiar sight of the wreck of the Diang family just off Robin Island greets the leaders. In first position, it's still the six litre boat of Julian Craig and Peter Harrison. Up into second place, Alistair McNaughty's 25 foot right catamaran has passed the eight metre phantom of Dave Trotter. In fourth position, it's Arthur Rafiti in Thundercat, second in the six litre class. And now, running into the wind, Julian Craig lead is under threat. Alistair McNaughty making full use of the aerodynamic lift from the catamaran goes through and into the lead overall. Off the famous Clifton Beach, and it's still Alistair McNaughty closely followed by PS for Power, Julian Craig, Telstar Mono, and an opportunity for the press to catch up with number three, David Potter.
And it's RCO Rasiti in Thundercat still trying to get back with the leaders. And there's little change as the Diang family greets the leaders once again. Bill, Alistair McNaughty from the United Kingdom leads the South African Julian Craig. And while Dave Totter and Arthur Rasiti concentrate on battle, number 69 Mike Standing is through into second position. Back to the leaders, landing the mark and running with the win. Alistair McNaughty catamaran loses its aerodynamic advantage and allows the monohull of Julian Craig to get back into the lead. Navigator Peter Harrison in number 11 checks their ever-increasing lead over Alistair McNaughty and Charles Holmes in Vladivar as they head once again across a very flat table bay towards Milnerton Lighthouse. It's the last lap and both these boats are around Milnerton, but Julian Craig is in trouble. The number 11 is slowing down and has stopped. The crew check the instrument and it appears they have run out of fuel. Just a few nautical miles from the finish and the glory of an overall win. And that puts Britain back in the lead with Alistair McNulty. Mike Sandring and Patty Barker move into second position, making it a 1-2 for the United Kingdom. Louis de Toy and Clive Cohen in the 7 metre Crusader have been consistent throughout this race and lead the South African 2 litre challenge. Alistair McNaughty and Charles Holmes, the 1987 British champions. With a vast experience of international competition, they are only just over one lap away from an epic victory. But first, they have to beat off the challenge of compatriots Mike Sandring and Patty Barker, who have closed to within 25 seconds. <laughs> The run in for home, Joe and Peter Marenghi, lying second in the two litre class, are lapped by a flying Alistair McNaughty in Vladivar as he fenced his victory and heads for the line. victory in the first leg of the championship. What a big South African challenge in this, the first international event in 20 years. I think it is fair to say that there has not been uh, the powerboat racing in South Africa since 1970, and that's 18 years ago, and really their, their lack of experience showed today, because uh, at the beginning of the race, uh, when it was flatter, they were certainly uh, looking in good positions, but as the race roughed up and they were unable to see their turn boys, and the navigation aspect came into this race, then certainly uh, they were uh, dropping back and uh, their inexperience showed. But uh, we're hoping that this international invitation race will be one of the first of many world races here, and in fact that a world championship uh, will be held here in South Africa, certainly within the next two years. The flashback to heat number one of the Charter Briquettes International Offshore Powerboat Racers. The British teams of line honours and four leader winners were Alistair McNulty and Charles Holmes in Vladivar. It was obvious that the freshmen from South Africa had a lot of catching up to do. 
Norman Livingston, South Africa's team leader and hot favorite, was crippled out of the race with broken steering. South Africa's P.S. Papa learnt that hard lesson just one lap from home when they ran out of fuel. I mean, it was a total disaster for us. I mean, we, we really thought we had the race in the bag at one stage. And uh, the minute the uh, gauges dropped, we were in trouble, you know, and it was absolutely disappointing. Mike Sandring almost took the lead, but was dogged by electrical faults. Well, I really thought we were going to win, and we were coming through the field nicely, and we were very happy with the way the boat was performing. The problem was that the left-hand engine, before the race started, we had a problem with the stop circuit. And now the scene is set in Hout Bay for the second Chaka International Offshore Race. There's a festive atmosphere and a buzz of excitement as the South African crowd anxiously awaits to see how their teams will fare. It's the white flare and just two minutes to go to race start. The yellow flag is raised and the start boat leads the crews into the heart of Hout Bay. The green flag is up and the race is underway. 28 finely tuned 6 litre, 4 litre and 2 litre boats. A total of 70,000 horsepower led by Andrew Chambers turned the calm waters of Hout Bay into a foaming cauldron. for the first boy. Joe Guernsey leads the charge with Mel Hawtrey taking up the challenge on the inside. Vladivar, winner at Table Bay, is on the outside with Julian Craig close behind. That's Norman Levinson in Supercat tries to keep in touch with the leaders. Round the first boy and Mel Hawtrey is through. the lead past the second boy, followed by Vladivar, Thundercat and Spindrifter. Eddie Hay in 88, the four-litre cataman, still searching for more power. It's a three-man race as they head for the open sea. And Alistair McNaughty in 96 makes full use of the aerodynamic wing on the catamaran and takes the lead. As they approach the third mark, it's still number 96. But Norman Levinson squeezes in and passes Alfio Rossiti and into second position. Alfio Rossiti, winner of the six-litre class in Table Bay at full throttle in the 450-horsepower catamaran Thundercat in a desperate attempt to stay in touch with the leaders. And Dave Trotter takes the inside line and comes alongside Alistair McNulty. In their wake, it's still Alfio Rossiti. In the following group, Norman Lemonson in Spindrifter Supercat, hugging the boy, leads Western Security, Joe Guernsey, T.S. Rapaya, and Mel Hawtrey's Genevieve. Norman Lemonson checks the course and finds the Englishman in number 69 on his starboard side. And like two cats on a hot tin roof, it's the South African who leads as they surge forward towards Hout Bay Harbour. Back with the leaders, and Dave Trotter has passed 96 Alistair McNulty and now leads the field. 227, Chris Beery at full throttle, pleases the crowd on lap three with his own individual fly pass. In the only remaining boat in the six-litre class, it's the family affair with Morris Wainick and his two sons. And the crowd witnesses a sad affair as Eddie Hay in 88 is out. A lost propeller has robbed him of any victory hope. Back with the leaders, and it's to and fro as the British crews battle it out for the lead. Alistair McNulty and Charles Holmes versus Mike Sandring and Patty Barker. And Norman Levinson, with a very tight turn indeed, makes ground in third position. As they head towards the farthest point of the course, confusion reigns as they check 
and recheck their bearings, it's ring a ring of roses before finally they head for the next mark. European champion Dave Totter has had engine problems and relinquishes his early lead. Julian Craig and Peter Harrison are unable to find the form that made them race leaders in Table Bay a week ago. When the leaders reach Mark 5, they find it has drifted and turned on its geographical position. In a confused attempt to find boy number five, the field split up, and while the leaders headed back on course, the smaller craft headed further and further into the deep blue of the Atlantic Ocean. The chase helicopter signals them back to land before they end up in Rio de Janeiro. Des Clooney is able to take advantage and leads the two-litre class from Louis de Toy and Simon Tillian. Rounding the final mark and fencing victory, Mike Sandring and Patty Barker begin to celebrate. So it's 400 points for the English couple, who are soon to be married in the Seychelles, and a second position overall in these championships. Alistair McNaughty knows that 300 points is enough to secure a championship win overall. A well-deserved and hard-fought victory for the 1987 British champion. 10 champion Dave Totter crosses the line and on this occasion has to be content with third position overall. So the overall winners in the Chaka Briquette International Offshore Powerboat Series, Alistair McNulty and Charles Holmes in Vladivar, proving that Britain still rules the waves. Well, for this year at least.